To finish off our discussion on the cell cycle in this lecture overall, we're going to end by talking about one last type of cell division. It's called binary fission. And we're going to write that as our flowchart title, binary fission. You might have heard of this before. We're just going to sort of lay out some basic details about binary fission because it is also a type of a cell cycle, a type of cell division, specifically utilized by a couple of different types of uh, organisms. So we'll say that binary fission is a process that occurs in. Process that occurs in, and then we'll create some suspense, dot, dot, dot. Um, two types of things, single celled eukaryotes, so we'll say single-celled eukaryotes, and also um, within prokaryotes. Single-celled eukaryotes, um, they're going to undergo binary fission in the form of asexual reproduction. They utilize binary fission in order to reproduce asexually. So they do not combine gametes with another, uh, let's say, type of single-celled eukaryote. They usually just split themselves apart into two. They use binary fission as that process. And this actually involves uh, parts of mitosis. So in, it involves some mitotic um, components that create binary fission, that create asexual reproduction for these single-celled eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, on the other hand, which are, of course, bacteria and archaea, they actually have this uh, idea of binary fission. They utilize binary fission um, once they grow to a certain size. Usually once they are growing and they double their size, they have to undergo um, a division. They have to divide. And once they've doubled their size after the growth, and once they've divided, they form two cells. And these two cells undergo binary fission through this whole process. So each of these sort of steps, our overall um, our overarching theme is that binary fission is the process that drives this, um, these four steps. And so another thing I want you to know about prokaryotes is that they actually do not involve any mitotic um, influence. So there's no mitosis, let's say. And in addition, prokaryotes have single um, circular chromosomes. And that's an important fact because the singular circular chromosomes are going to serve as an interesting sort of look at how they undergo DNA synthesis, how they replicate their DNA. So let's talk about bacteria in more detail in terms of what they do in uh, regards to binary fission. Bacteria are a type of prokaryote. We want to focus on these because this is a very relevant topic. Bacteria are often used in labs because of their ability to rapidly divide. And they rapidly divide mostly using binary fission. So it's important to understand the process. So binary, uh, binary fission in bacteria is the idea of cell division of course, so CD, and this cell division starts with chromosomal replication, much like it does with us, chromosomal replication. And once this chromosomal replication happens, it actually starts at the idea of a one origin. What you have to imagine is that bacterial chromosome is double-stranded and it's a circular chromosome. So there's one single circular chromosome that looks like this within bacteria. So this is the chromosome. This is literally the genetic material within a bacterial cell. So we would imagine a bacterial cell like this. So that's a bacterial cell. What happens is there's one point right here, let's imagine, at which we have an origin of replication, where we have an origin of uh, a duplication. And what we imagine this sort of looking like is this sort of bubble that forms. It's called a replication fork. So if we redraw this circle, this double-stranded DNA, we imagine that at that point, we have this sort of bubble that forms. And that bubble is forming because now what's going to happen is more replication. We're going to continue replicating. We're going to make a totally new replicant. And now we're also going to replicate on the inside. So now we've totally made two separate entities. We made one, let's imagine this, I'm going to color it in, this as one piece of chromosomal DNA. And then we've also made a separate piece on the interior. That's another separate piece of chromosomal DNA. And this piece that's colored in is going to go to a separate cell. And the one that's not colored in is going to go to a separate cell. That's what we mean by chromosomal, by cell division starting with chromosomal replication. It starts at one origin. And what happens is, just like we drew here, the replication itself, so REP, replication, on each, there's replication happening on each growing chromosome. 
just like I drew on the bottom. Now, I can't do great justice to this process, but I highly suggest going through the playlist and looking at the binary fission specifically, videos devoted to binary fission, to actually see the replication happening on each independent chromosome so that we see how the bacterial cell um, sort of starts off cell division by chromosomal replication. Moving forward, as this is happening, as the chromosome is replicating, the cell actually continues growth. The cell continues... Um, growth and uh, elongation, let's say, growth and elongation. And as it continues this process, it's going to eventually double in size, just like we stated in the prelude right here to um, prokaryotes, to bacteria specifically. They grow, double in size, and what do we expect? We actually expect overall, at the end of this, we expect one circular chromosome like this, and we expect the other circular chromosome like this colored in because it's just the separate one, let's imagine. So we have a separate cell here, separate cell here. These two have divided, these two have um, duplicated themselves. So we would say we have two circular chromosomes. Because once again, the overall goal, the first step of any cell division process is to make sure that both cells have the blueprint, have the genetic material necessary to continue life because you need genetic material to live. So it's important to duplicate it perfectly and separate it evenly so that both eventual daughter cells can have enough DNA to live. And that's what bacteria have do a great job of. And then finally, what we imagine is sort of the same thing as cytokinesis, where we have the cell membrane of this dividing, growing, duplicating, uh, chromosome duplicating cell, cell membrane actually pinches in. We saw this in the formation of the cleavage furrow. It's almost exactly the same. The cell membrane will pinch in, and once it pinches in up to a certain point, this actually will cause a divide. It divides cell into two identical and independent, identical and independent daughter cells. That's binary fission. It's a way to make two identical and independent daughter cells, each with their own membrane and each with their own nucleus. And this process overall is very, very, very efficient and also very effective. Um, so we'll say efficient and effective. But we'll actually see later on the consequences of such an efficient, effective, fast process. A lot of the times, mistakes are going to occur, and that's when we see the development of mutations. That's something that we'll talk about later on in this um, series of Biology 115. But overall, hopefully you understand binary fission to a greater detail. Binary fission is specifically found in two types of uh, organisms, let's say. Single-celled eukaryotes, where they utilize asexual reproduction in the form of binary fission, and prokaryotes. Prokaryotes need to grow, double in size, divide, and turn into two cells. They utilize binary fission for this process. What they do is they first replicate their chromosome by creating a origin of replication. Once they've replicated both cho chromosomes into two separate chromosomes, two separate circular chromosomes, that cell is then going to continue to grow and it's going to go up to double its size and create two circular chromosomes like we just said. Membrane will pinch in, divide the cell into two identical and independent daughter cells that will each have their own membrane and own nucleus. So hopefully you have a better understanding of cell division. This concludes our discussion on lecture 10, cell division and cell cycle specifically. <laughs>